We have some breaking news, Derek. Uh-oh. Yes, sir. Kyle Lowry has been waived by the Charlotte Uh-oh. Hornets, and no per Woj, it has cleared the way for him to sign with the Philadelphia 76ers upon clearing waivers, according to Mark Bartlesey and his agent. So Lowry will sign for two point eight million for the rest of the season, which is the that is the veterans uh, minimum. Uh, so that will be two million dollars against the Sixers cap, uh, which is the prorated two year veteran minimum. Uh, the league does that so that you're not disincentivized from signing older veterans. Uh, so the Sixers should still have about three million dollars left under the luxury tax. So that means maybe one more veteran minimum signing, and who knows? Maybe Rick. We'll see. We'll see. It doesn't look bad when you. F- we'll get to the positive things about Buddy Heald and campaign, and certainly Tyrese Maxey a little bit later. But talking to the guys during the, during the game and seeing what Buddy Heald was doing, not only with his outside shooting, but putting the ball on the floor, and what he was able to do by shot creation i even put it in my notes here shot creators buddy hill campaign tyrese maxi rick and then i had sometimes get harris rick. but uh, but yeah exactly go get him rick <laughs> but it was we've talked so much about when guys were injured and he's the only one tyrese maxi that can put the ball on the floor and create a shot yes now bringing in another player Tobias really getting off easy, by the way, because no, no, Kyle Lowry back. happened to get waived at the we're time back. we're doing I mean, the show. We also have to talk about Buddy. We have to talk about Tyrese. And they did win a game for the first time in what feels like about three weeks. So like, yeah, it's probably, that's probably true. The, the point was they're going to get another player who can shot create. Even at, at his age, you, you know that he is creative enough and crafty enough to, to get by guys and not only look for his own shot, but also help out and, and and lend and lend the hand to get the ball to others for some some decent looks. So um so far, I mean, we'll see how it all transpires as the, after he clears waivers. 24 he had 48 hours. 48 hours. 40 yeah. hours before he clears waivers and then probably won't play before the deadline. He probably has to get a ramp up so we'll have the the Let's say post the, All-Star break. Post All-Star we'll, break. We'll, yes. We'll see him. So we'll see him then and um it we'll, we'll see how that works, but Good move. Uh, we've talked yeah. more ball handling. It, it's not a bad thing. Uh, another winning player in this league who's won a championship, knows how to play, knows how to win, and coming back home, maybe that was something also significant of significance. Has the relationship with Nick Nurse winning that championship in Toronto with Nick Nurse. Certainly knowing home, knowing these players here, and there's nothing bad, I don't think, by signing Kyle Lowry and bringing him in as another guard to add to the rotation. So I want to start in one place after we saw Marcus come here and what it meant to him to play in Philadelphia. If you just for you a second. Yeah, does Kyle get the keys of the city? <laughs> sure. Probably why not? should get them, yeah. but that's a, who knows? Set aside the basketball component. It's just really cool for a guy who Kyle Lowry, for whatever you think of him as a player now has accomplished quite a bit for his career. For him to get to come home and play in his home city for the team that he probably grew up rooting for, all that, that's a really cool story. When he gets announced checking in or potentially starting for his first time, depending on how many guys are available, all that, Mm -hmm. that's going to be a really cool moment for Kyle to walk out of that tunnel and and play for the 76ers. Like that, I love that stuff as someone who's like, yeah, I care about the basketball and all that, but like the human part of it is really cool there. Uh, I will also say, as we talked about during the deadline show, was very clearly telegraphed (laughs) the second they moved Pat Bev for seemingly no reason. And I will say, campaign has been better than I think we would have expected. I think tonight he didn't shoot well. The floor game was good, though, Mm -hmm. and he shot well last night. But... He is not playing over Kyle Lowry. Like he's no, pretty and when, when Daryl has a press conference the other day, yesterday, and he says like we're telling Pat that like his role is going to be diminished, he's not saying that because of campaign. He's yes. saying that because he knows Kyle Lowry is going to be coming here in a couple of days. He just can't say it yet. Yeah, and so look, I, I think if you do look at what campaign has done since coming here, you can see the clear case for why Lowry can help this team. Even though I see some discussion about oh he's washed and. He Look, is, as a, sure. Yes, as That's a why you're starting, for a minimum. Yes. yes, as a starting level guy, like a top of the rotation type player, yes, Kyle Lowry is not that guy anymore. But he has a functional handle. A he's functional a, brain. A good volume <laughs> yes. shooter. He's a good passer if he's able to get to the spots, which that's a whole different discussion. 
And in a Joel Embiid centric world, like he might struggle, I think, for these this next month or however long without Joel. When it is a Joel from the elbows, Joel post up type of world, Kyle Lowry as an unshy shooter, a guy who can then beat a closeout, hit a quick pass, do a drop off to Joel, do all the little things that a point guard needs to do in that world, he will fit beautifully. Can he defend people anymore? Not really, but he's also, as some other people are pointing out, a guy who will take charges, who yes, will sell will. calls and do all that kind of stuff. I think this is, a, for a buyout guy, it's about as good as you could possibly hope for, I, I think, right now. And that's going to be helpful for this team. And you know what he's going to do? He's probably going to make that pass when Rick or K.J. Martin in those minutes may not be a lot, but if they draw something up that, like that, I think we're pretty confident that a, a play like that, it may, it may look like nothing now, but it could mean something in the moment where you're making a – a 25 foot pass on the B line, and you need it to be perfect for the recipient of it to catch it yeah. and finish it. That's a point guard who we've seen make that play, make that that alley oop pass many, many times. And for people saying a good move, yes, yeah, a good move because as Kyle said and Derek talked about, the money that you're going to spend, and as a buyout candidate who is going to play minutes but he's not going to start most likely. And he's just going to be a, a player who has, again, experience champion, not just playoff experience, but championship experience playing for a coach that he was with to win that championship. That's not nothing. And then you also add a on leader the home, too. Like if yes. you want to talk about things that you the lost Pat with Bev Pat Bev, right. Kyle Lowry is a no nonsense, like fiery competitive guy. And there were times early in his career too, Devon and Derek, you guys, both know this. There are plenty of stories about him out there. The reason he bounced around early in his career is because he was a real pistol as a yeah. person to deal Completely with. Completely unpredictable. Yep. And un that's unpredictable is probably the best way to describe it. But as he's gotten older, certainly as he has succeeded and he's gotten paid well for being a very good player, found his different spots that he fit in, players and coaches and what have you. He has mellowed out. He's become a family guy. He's deep into his career. And so now you get kind of the best of that where it's ultra competitive, set the tone every day, Kyle Lowry. But you don't get the like, hey, he's going to try to fight somebody. Yeah. <laughs> right. Kyle Lowry in his late 30s. So on, in that, on that way, it's better that they've gotten him late in his career because early in his career, he was a pretty volatile guy. And it's like a lot of guys are as they're figuring out their place in the league and they – get bounced around. So he's going to bring some some veteran wisdom and some real competitive drive to try to do something for his hometown team. And look, I don't want to like tell you everything's perfect because it's not. That's why he's being bought out. That's why he's, you're getting him for the minimum. His defense is nowhere near what it used to be. Like Patrick Beverly right now is a better defender than Kyle Lowry, even though I trust Kyle Lowry's decision-making uh, and thought process. His feet just aren't what they used to be. Um, his offense isn't what it used to be. You're not going to give it to him and ask him to create. Frankly, campaign's a better creator right now, and I don't trust campaign. I don't want campaign on the court for long stretches of the game when everyone is healthy either. But what Kyle Lowry can do, he can make an open catch and shoot three at a pretty decent volume. He can attack a closeout, make good decisions when they rotate, and he can cut and make good plays. And that's what you want. You want a shooter and a decision maker to play five to ten minutes a game when he needs to, if he ends up playing 25 a night, yeah, there's going to be a lot of warts in there. And there might be a little room in between. Like it might be 15, you know, who knows? We'll see how it shakes out. He might play a little bit alongside Maxi because he is a little bigger. He is strong, but you, it's not going to be a huge role. You're not going to ask him to create, especially when Embiid comes back. This is a guy you want who can fit alongside of Joel Embiid. And I think, especially when you talk about the next couple of weeks, he might look out of place at times. And I think don't overreact to that because you're just trying to win enough games, which Thank goodness they picked this one up because it gets tough. You're just trying to win enough games to get Joel Embiid back, and you want people who fit next to Embiid. I think Kyle, as a, like I said, 10, maybe 15-minute-per-game player, fits alongside Joel Embiid given his current limitations at this stage of his career. And on the season, he has played in, I saw it, I just had it. He, he's averaging 8.2 points per game on the season overall with the Miami Heat before being traded to the Charlotte Hornets. Four assists, three and a half rebounds, shooting 42.6% from the floor and from three-point range on the season, 38%. And he played 37 games with the Miami Heat before and by that by the trade. way, like two-thirds of his shot attempts are threes. Mm -hmm. He is a guy who he knows at this stage of his career, 
There's not a whole lot of screwing around. He knows where his shots should be and where they are, and he takes them. And as we've discussed with Buddy Heald, who we're going to get to at some point, just having guys who are willing three-point shooters Mm -hmm. and good three-point shooters is an important thing on any team, but especially on a team that has Joel Embiid as the most important player. Yep, 38% on the season. So hopefully he can keep that up. So Kyle Lowry officially waived by the Charlotte Hornets, according to Woj and his agent, I guess. And it looks like that just clears the pathway for him to come home and sign with the Philadelphia 76ers, adding to Buddy Hill campaign. And we'll see what else. 